Now we come towards gravitational potential. That is the work done to bring unit mass from infinity to a point in the field of a given mass. That is what the definition. And its unit, we'll take it as work done. So it is joule per meter, joule per unit length. So now the work done in bringing a unit mass from infinity to a point in the gravitational field is called the gravitational potential at that point. When we use this term infinity, it means a point outside uh, the uh, mass, that is outside the field of a mass. Gravitational potential at a point P, distance R from the point mass M will be, that is given by function minus gm by R. And if R is infinity, then V will be equal to zero because if we put R is infinity, it is number over zero. So net potential will become zero. Now, unit of gravitational potential is joule per kilogram. That is work done per unit mass. Now we can see the figure. M is the bigger mass. It has got a field. And uh, we find that we have to find the potential at point P. So we will find that GM over R is the potential at point P. P point must be in the field of mass M. Now, another thing is, that is dimensional formula of the gravitational potential, and that will be in terms of length and time. So it will become M naught L2 T minus two. Now, gravitational potential is a scalar quantity, but the gravitational field intensity earlier was a vector quantity. Vector quantity must have a magnitude as well as the direction. The magnitude is always given by taking the modulus of a number. Now, gravitational potential is a scalar quantity. Now, we have to again go through with an example. Two bodies of mass 100 kg and 1000 kg are lying one meter apart. The gravitational potential at the midpoint of the line joining them will be how much? So in order to solve this question, uh, we will do the net potential. Potential is scalar. So we find potential with respect to one mass, then potential with respect to another mass, and then algebraically we will add them. So potential, gravitational potential at the midpoint we have to find. So find Vg1 plus Vg2, that is Gm1 by R1 minus Gm2 by R2, then G is taken out common and within the brackets, we can write that is the values of the numbers. And the number is found to be 1.47 into 10 to the power minus joule, minus seven joule per kilogram. Now gravitational potential energy. Now this gravitational potential energy, like it is very comparable to electrical potential energy, which is equal to minus k q1 q2 by r. So in the denominator, we don't write r square, rather we write r. Now in the gravitational potential energy, we take minus g m1 m2 over r, where m1 m2 are the masses, r is the distance among the masses, and uh, gravitation will act between m1 and m2, and capital G will be uh, gravitational constant. So the gravitational potential energy of a body at a point is defined as the amount of work done in bringing the body from infinity to a point against the field. The gravitational potential energy of mass M in gravitational field of mass capital M at a distance small r is given by minus g m m over r. U is the gravitational potential energy. And uh, where r is the distance between m and small m. Uh, so two bodies are there. That is capital M and small m and distance is r. So gravitational potential energy, uh, just comparable to electrical potential energy is given in terms of masses. That is u is equal to minus g m m over r. At any place in gravitational field, the gravitational potential is v. Then gravitational potential energy of the mass m at a place is given by the product of mass and potential. So we have taken m into v. 
the gravitational potential energy of a particle of mass m at point distance r from the center of the earth is given as minus g m e m over r that is a system of mass of the earth and the body placed on the circumference of the earth and r is the distance between m e and m g is the gravitational constant and if small r is greater than r e then the formula will be slightly changed it will be g m m and then r is greater than r e so we can write 3 r e square minus r square over 2 r e cube where r e capital is the radius of earth and small r that is the distance square from m if r is less than r e the force between the two particles if their potential energy is u so we can take the force as derivative of energy with respect to r so we have written minus du over dr it is minus d over dr and for u compute the value minus g mm over r so we have to take the derivative only with respect to r so we take out minus g mm outside the bracket and we take d over dr of 1 over r so derivative of 1 over r so we will calculate derivative of r to the power minus 1 and the net expression will become minus g mm over r square and minus sign will be there indicate the minus sign indicate that the force on bodies is towards each other that is their attractive force the gravitational force is never repulsive it is basically an attractive force note if a particle is at height h from the earth surface and r is the radius of earth then the net distance of the body from the center will be r e plus h and the formula of the potential energy will become minus g m m over r e plus h when we write m m m e is the mass of the earth small m is the mass of the body at height h divided by r e plus h this is in accordance with the gravitational potential energy now we will find that gravitational potential energy is scalar quantity its value is always negative the unit is joule or earth because it is the work done gravitational potential energy of mass at infinite distance r will be taken as infinity and the net number will become zero so gravitational potential energy of mass at infinite distance from earth is zero and at all the other points it is less than zero so it will become negative intensity of the gravitational field and the gravitational potential we can relate them both quantities so for a hollow sphere if the sphere is hollow for that the point the line op is taken as r point p is situated outside the hollow sphere then op must be equal to r greater than uh, capital r where r is the radius of the hollow sphere and r is the net distance away from the center now intensity of gravitational field outside will be minus gm over r square and potential outside will be minus gm over r so if we take the expression over one minus gm over r square we can write that expression as minus gm over r into 1 over r and minus gm over r will be taken as v so v over r will be the net expression now we can see the figure so according to this figure the statement of the hollow sphere is made if point p is situated on the surface of the sphere then small r and capital r are equal in that case the gravitational intensity will be minus gm over r square but gravitational potential on the surface will be minus gm over r if point p is inside the hollow sphere then op is r less than r em will be zero but v inside potential will be minus gm over r now the gravitational field intensity inside a hollow sphere is zero but gravitational potential energy is always constant and is equal to the potential at the surface 
So whatever is the potential on the circumference, same will be the potential inside the hollow sphere. Now we come towards the solid sphere. And in the case of solid sphere, again, OP is taken as R according to the diagram. P is situated outside the sphere. So OP, that is R is greater than R. And similarly, the intensity of uh, gravitational field outside will be minus gm over r square, but potential outside will be gm over r. Now we have not taken a negative sign. If point P is situated on the surface of sphere, then OP is equal to r. So in the equations, we have to replace, that is small r with capital R. So we have written E surface, that is the gravitational field intensity on the surface, is minus gm over r square and the potential on the surface will be minus gm over r because the body is brought from infinity. So same figure is to be again seen and the same explanation is made. Now if a point P is situated inside the sphere, obviously small r will be less than capital R. In that case, E in, that is gravitational field intensity inside will be minus gm r over r cube. Whereas in the second case, it should be gm within the brackets, it should be 3 r square minus r square whole divided by 2 r cube. Again, the same figure is to be referred.